Welcome back to East Coast Wagering. We have a lot of stakes races to choose from this weekend, including a nice card at Belmont, a couple stakes races at Delaware Park, and a couple more at Prairie Meadows. But today, I want to focus on Horseshoe, Indiana, where they run the Indiana Oaks and Indiana Derby, both grade three races this coming Saturday. I'm going to break down the full field for the Indiana Derby. I'm going to give you my selections for the Indiana Oaks, and I'm also going to give you my picks for the late pick five, which is all stakes races. <laughs> I'm going to start with the highlight of the card. It's the Grade 3 Indiana Derby, Race 12, going a mile in the 16th on the dirt for three-year-olds. And I'm just going to take these top to bottom, starting with the one-horse trademark. Trademark last raced out in the Pat Day Mile, a Grade 2 race on the Kentucky Derby undercard. In that race, we saw the return of Jack Christopher, who easily defeated that field, but trademark really showed nothing much at all in that one. I think this horse wants to be more forwardly placed, and in the races he has been, he's done better. It seems likely from the one post, and with the fact there's not a lot of speed in this race, that they'll likely have him a bit closer than he's been in his last couple. This is also a step down in class from what he has been running, so if he does show more early interest, he could stick around for a piece, I think. But I don't really like his chances for the win spot here. I'm going to play him third or fourth in my bets, because I like a 15 to 1 price that I'm getting on him, but I like a couple more for the win in place spots. The number two horse is First Glimpse, and he is a bit of a long shot. He's 20 to 1 on the morning line. The horse is 1 for 11 lifetime. His speed figures rank significantly lower than a couple of the others in this race. So to be blunt, this horse is pretty much a throw out for me. A horse that I do like that's a little bit of a price though is the number three horse Moens, who won last out in a locally based race here at Horseshoe, Indiana in the Hoosier Breeders Sophomore Stakes, which was limited to Indiana bred three-year-olds. In that race, he was forwardly placed throughout, holding his rail position right off the pace setter, then pulling away, turning for home. This is a big step up for him, but out of the longer shots, I actually think this one has the biggest chance. He has been progressing from a speed figure perspective and seems to run his best races and routes. He is cross-centered in an undercard race, so I'm wondering if he was just entered here to see how the race shaped up, with the top couple being cross-centered as well. If he does run, I will play him a bit underneath for the price I'm getting on him, but there are a couple in this field that I do like a little bit more for the win. The number four horse is King Ottoman, and he's 5-1 to one on the morning line. This son of Curlin was still a maiden when he won his last out race, the Texas Derby, at Lone Star Park. In that race, he set off the pace, riding the rail to the far turn, where he went four wide into the stretch, eventually wearing down the leader to win by a head. Overall, it wasn't a terrible race, and he has been progressing from a figure perspective, but I really don't think he beat anything in that race at all, and there are a couple really nice horses here in this race. Based on his price, I'll likely take others who offer more value, but if he does take another step forward, he could possibly fill out the trifecta or superfecta. The number five horse, New Year's Fever, is one of the long shots here at 20 to 1 on the morning line, and like the number three, Moens, he is cross-centered in the race nine. So I'm not sure if he's going to go in that one or run in this one, but if he does go here, I think that he will be the likely pace center, as he's shown speed in his last couple races, and this race doesn't really have a whole lot of speed in it. However, I don't think this horse is fast enough to win, and I think he would have to take an absolutely massive step forward to even hit the board. Uh, I'm going to be playing against this one. However, a horse that I do think has a chance is the number six, Rattle and Roll. He's the morning line favorite at 5-2, to two, and he is coming off one week's rest off of a win in the American Derby last week. His connections have confirmed that he will race here in this race and not the Iowa Derby, which he has also entered. I did not like him last week, but he was closer to the pace than he has shown in most of his races, which I think put him in a better position to get that win, with a career best speed figure at that. With the jump back up to Graded Stakes Company and the one-week turnaround, I'm going to play against him again as the likely favorite. I will play him underneath of my exotics, but I just don't think he can win back-to-back -back weeks, especially against a more talented field. The number seven best actor moves up in class after back-to-back -back wins against Maidens and non-winners of one other than. In that last race, he followed close to a quick pace and made his move around the turn, corralling the leader in the stretch and drawing off. Obviously, this is much tougher company he faces today, but he won't be chasing nearly the pace he did in his last race this time, and he has won at this distance in his maiden score. I think he fits in this company and is one of my top selections in this race. I will play him both on top and in multi-race wagers. The number eight actuator successfully transitioned from turf to dirt in his last out race, winning by over seven lengths. 
In that race, he chased right off the pace throughout and drew away easily in the stretch. In addition, that race was flattered as the second place finisher, Hippodrome, won his next out. He's also entered in the Iowa Derby, and I'm not sure at this point which race they're going to point him towards, but assuming he does run here, he has a couple questions to answer, and I'm not sure the value is going to be there, especially if there are scratches. Can he step up in class from maiden to grade three? Can he run the distance successfully as his last out was seven furlongs? I think based on his impressive victory, he may take some action and could go off lower than a seven to two morning line. I will play this one in my multi-races in case he can answer all the questions, but I'm going to try to beat him in vertical bets unless his odds drift up higher than what I expect. The number nine horse Unoho was originally slated to be in both the Kentucky Derby and under consideration for the Preakness field, but was withdrawn from both due to injuries. I don't question this horse's ability because I think he does have talent, but what I do question is his durability, and that gives me some concern here. Over three months ago in his last race, the Arkansas Derby, he got pinned against the rail and was effectively completely taken out of the race. Prior to that race, though, he had a gutsy win in the Rebel Stakes at big odds seen here. He rode the rail throughout, starting to move up into the turn, but appeared done coming down the stretch. He re-rallied at that point to get up for the win. I think this is a very underrated horse, and I love the price you were getting on him at 6-1 to one morning line. I do wonder if he will be back in top form, as I'm sure he missed some training time due to injury. Along with the number 7, though, this one is going to be my other top selection. Running out the field is the number 10 Fowler Blue, and this one's going to be a play against for me as well, like a couple other horses in this field. I'm just not impressed with his recent efforts, which he's not done anything against, in my opinion, weaker competition that he faces here. I think that he's going to have to take another massive step forward like a couple of these other to even possibly be around late at the end. So the way I'm playing this race is I'm going to play the number 7 Best Actor and the number 9 Unoho on top. I'm going to add in the number eight actuator for second, and I'm going to throw all three of those in my multi-races. I'm going to throw in the number one trademark, the number three Moens if he runs here, and the number six rattle and roll for third. The other graded stakes race is the race prior to the Indiana Derby. It's the Indiana Oaks, another grade three, race 11, going a mile and the 16th on the dirt for three-year-old fillies. And in this race, unlike the Indiana Derby, I think that there's a standout horse here where the Indiana Derby is a little bit more wide open. I'm going to be keying mainly on one horse in this field, and that's the number five horse, the morning line favorite, Interstate Daydream, who last out was victorious in the grade two Black Eyed Susan. In that race, she raided right off the lead and took control of the race driving for home as the pace setter faded. I wonder a little if the track did carry her forward a bit, as most of the horses who were there at the end were near the pace, and the following day, it did appear there was a speed bias on the Preakness card. With that said, I just feel like this horse is a notch above the rest of these. I'm going to key her on my vertical bets and play her in my multi-races. I will throw in one more horse in my multi-races to try and juice it a bit, but I do think this horse is much the one to beat here. My second selection and the other horse that I'm going to be playing in my multi-race wagers is the number three horse, Patna, who's won back-to-back -back efforts and one last out seen here and an $80,000 non-winners of one other than. In that race, she tracked the leaders through fairly quick fractions and grabbed the lead and drew off in the stretch. This filly could find herself on the lead here unless possibly Interstate Daydream or the number eight go from the outside post. In either case, I don't think the pace is going to be quick and I do think that it should set Patton up with a nice trip that hopefully she can take advantage of. My underneath plays will be the number one Candy Raid, the number seven Runaway Wife, and the number eight 63 Caliber. I'm a bit skeptical about the number one, but I feel like you have to include her based off her top speed figures. She's also entered in the Iowa Oaks, so she may opt for that race instead, but this does seem like the easier spot in my opinion. The number seven comes back off eight days rest, but she has looked good for her last two and could grab a piece late. And the number eight has won two straight here at the track and has shown she can get the distance, though her figures are a bit on the slow side. So adding in my selections for the earlier three races of the pick five, I'm going to go in race eight, the five South Bend, the one Mr. Wireless, the eight Spa City, and the six Thomas Shelby. In race nine, I'm going to single a horse. I'm not sure yet whether Moens is going to go in race nine or in race 12. So I'm going to make the assumption that Moens is going here. And if so, I'm going to single Moens. If not, then I'm going to pivot, and my single is going to be the number 10, Mr. Chaos. In race 10, I'm going to go four deep with the 12, Ivar, the one, Some Like It Hot Brown, the nine, El Cabong, and the six, Duke of Hazard. 
And as I mentioned before, in race 11, I'm going to go too deep, Interstate Daydream and Patna. And in race 12, I'm going to go with Be Best Actor, Unoho, and Actuator. The total for that will be $48 for a 50 cent pick five. That's how I see the Indiana Derby shaping up this year. And hopefully we don't have too many scratches. I know a number of these are cross-centered in other races and at other tracks. I'd love to see this 10 horse field stay intact because I do think there's some value underneath that you can find here. I'm gonna be putting out another video tomorrow on the Belmont card, which has a number of graded stakes races and a really nice field for the Belmont Derby. Hit the subscribe button if you're interested in seeing that video and my other posts, so you'll get notified whenever I put new content out. This is Jeremy Peelmeyer for East Coast Wagering. Thanks again for watching my video and I'll see you again soon.